Hey, Life Church, I want to welcome all of you today, all of our Open Network churches, those all over the world at Church Online. You're in for an amazing treat. He's been here two times before, and you keep begging him, could you please bring him back? Well, I finally got him to say yes. Michael Jr. is one of the funniest guys alive. He had a movie come out recently called More Than Funny. I want you to go to his website anytime, michaeljr.com, find out more about this guy, buy his stuff, give it to people. He uh, opens doors with comedy, but he has a very serious message. I love who he is as a person. I love the way he's an incredible dad to his kids, a great man of God to his wife. He's my good friend. He's a good friend to our church. Could you please give a warm welcome today? Welcome back, Michael Jr. All right, thanks so much for having me. I love Craig, that dude is awesome. His handshake is a little aggressive. He doesn't even know it either. He's smiling the whole time while he's hurting you. <laughs> Craig is dope. So when I got to town, I went by his house, right? He was all asleep. And then I, so I took a picture of him. I think we got the picture. Yeah, it is. I took a picture of him. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. He loves snuggles. That's what he loves. Anyway. So I have. I actually... Uh, Due to Craig, I've been working out a lot because I'm, in, I'm inspired by his work ethic and just, just in, in general. So I started working out. Uh, I was at the gym the other month. And, um, <laughs> right? I was going to do some cardio, right? But they moved it upstairs. <laughs> I ain't going up there, man, please. <laughs> get, a, get an elevator or something, man. I ain't going up there. So I'm about to do some cardio, right? And uh, I get recognized by this lady, right? She's, she's like, <gasps> she's one of them. <gasps> I was like, hey, how you doing? She's like, Michael Jr., you don't understand. You're my favorite comedian. Every time I see you, I laugh my butt off. I was like, uh. <laughs> Keep laughing. <laughs> Keep laughing. <laughs> and people ask me questions, Michael Jr., what makes you laugh? And what makes me laugh really is, uh, is awkwardness. Did you feel it just now? <laughs> like, it's the best. Like, I'll look for awkwardness. Like, I'll do things. Like, I'll get on the elevator, right, when there's like six or seven people on there, and I'll let the door close behind me, and I won't turn around. <laughs> and then I'll say something random, like, it's Tuesday, but it's really Friday and everyone gets off on the next floor. <laughs> and then I just giggle my way to the top. But then I go to the stairwell and them same people from the elevator, and when they see me, I'm like, it's Thursday. <laughs> then they head back down. So my comedy, I always sit back and I pay close attention to people. Uh, one of the things that changed for me in comedy is when a comedian normally gets on stage, he wants to get laughs from people. But I felt like instead of trying to get laughs from people, I should give people an opportunity to laugh. But when I give, not just laughter, when I give anything, I try to give on purpose, meaning I try to never give out of compulsion or emotion. And when I talk about giving, I'm not talking about the tithe. That's not giving, that's called not stealing. I ain't talking about that. <laughs> so when I talk about giving, I'm talking about never really giving out of compulsion. I try to hear God's voice when I when I give, I try to be OB, and I'm really good at receiving too. Just wanna to throw that out there. <laughs> like I try to have a balance. It's very, very important that you have a balance. So this is what this looks like for me. I was at a Starbucks, right? And the car in front of me paid for my Starbucks coffee. That was awesome. So you know what I did? I did a little prayer. I ain't hear anything. Pulled off with some free Starbucks. <laughs> for real. Two weeks later, I'm at the same Starbucks. Car in front of me pays for my coffee. I was like, wow, that is awesome. Dude in the drive thru was like, you don't understand. You're the 23rd car in a row. I was like, wow, for real? Pull it off with some free Starbucks. <laughs> and here's the thing I know some of you guys are thinking I'm being insensitive. I like to beg to differ. Is it possible that the only person who really gave was the person in the front? Is it also possible that everyone else just had a hard time receiving? I didn't have a hard time receiving. I pulled off with some free Starbucks. And anytime you truly give, there's always a sacrifice. In fact, I would, I would probably argue that the sacrifice is the majority of the gift. 
especially with regards to John 3.16. So when you give, it's really about the sacrifice. So if you're going to buy a coffee, now suddenly you have this money that you wouldn't have before, and you buy someone else a coffee, there's really no sacrifice. But even if there is, obedience is better than sacrifice. Obedience. So I find comedy all over the place. Uh, another thing I do for awkwardness is, uh, you ever go on a job interview, and um, partway through you realize, huh, I don't want to work here. At that point, you should have fun. You just flip the whole interview. <laughs> They's like, so tell me a little bit about yourself. I'm like, you know what? Why don't you go first? <laughs> in fact, answer this question. Where do you see me in five years? <laughs> hmm, no, I don't like that answer. They always ask you those weird questions too. Like, you ever hear this question at an interview? They say, so tell me about a time you had a disagreement with a coworker and tell me about how you worked it out. I was like, oh, 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 okay, okay, yeah, yeah. So I had a colleague, right? He took all the credit for some work I did. Like, I did all the work. He did nothing, took all the credit. So here's what I did. Um, I just walked over to his cubicle, and, uh, you know, fast forward, here I am. You know? <laughs> That's exactly what happened. That's what's on the police report. That's what happened. <laughs> so whenever I do comedy, I... Uh, I'm really paying attention. I'm going to give you guys some insight that uh, I just want to give you guys some insight. So when I'm doing comedy, here's what's really going on. Uh, I am presenting joke number one. But at the same time, I'm doing the math on what I think joke number two should be based off how you're currently responding to joke number one. Once I have joke number two locked, I'll move on to joke number three and start doing the math on what I think joke number three should be based off how you're currently responding to number one and probably will respond to joke number two. I actually used to go seven jokes deep. Even though I'm presenting this joke, I'm seven jokes ahead. Then I met Jesus, right? And he wanted to talk. <laughs> so I can't really go seven jokes ahead because I'm starting, because on stage, I literally am asking this question, what can I give to this audience? Literally. In between the jokes, I'm asking, what can I give to this audience? In, right in between the gaps. Now here's the thing. I'll pause for a second. Everyone watching right now, you have some gaps. No matter what you do, you're a housewife, you're an attorney, there's gaps. My question to you is, what are you asking in between the gaps? Are you asking what can you get, or are you asking what can you give? Because if, because if you don't articulate which one you're asking, by default, you're actually saying, what can I get every single time, every since the fruit. So you have to articulate the answer to that. So I'm doing a show in... Um, I'm doing a show in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, right? And it's uh, probably 3,500 people at the show. I'm sitting in the back with a friend of mine before the show starts. And me and a, uh, and we're talking about this photograph that we saw online. And this was probably about 11 years ago. We're talking about this photograph. I'm like, cool, it's time for the show. I go out. There's like, I don't know, there's 3,500 people here. We're having a great time. We're probably 25 minutes into the show. And uh, I'm listening in between the gaps. And I felt like God said to me, hey, show him the picture. I'm like, oh, I don't know what you, so I'm not showing him that picture. That picture was not funny at all. <laughs> I am here to do jokes. You got to understand, on a scale of one to 10, we're probably laughing at a seven and a half. That is a pretty strong show. I'm excited, cool, moving on to the next joke. And I feel it again. I feel like God said, show him the picture. So in the middle of my comedy set, I show him this picture. So that is a picture of a vulture and a little girl. And what's going on in this picture is the little girl is actually trying to make it to this food bank that's outside of the photograph. So I'm explaining to my audience in Phoenix, just like I'm explaining to you, what's going on in this picture. The photographer is in the obvious place, and the vulture is in the obvious place as well. So I explained to them that the photographer actually waited 20 minutes because he felt like it would be a better shot if he could get one when the, when the vulture opened up his wings. After he took the picture, he got on a plane, came back to the States, turned in the picture, and won the Pillister Prize. It's like one of the greatest prizes you could ever get. Six months later, he commits suicide. And I said to that audience, just like I'm saying to you, had he been of the mindset, I believe, to save the little girl, he himself would probably be alive right now. So here's the thing, I cannot tell you what I said to that audience after that, but we went literally, I can't tell you what the segue was, but we went from laughing at a seven and a half to a zero doing a picture to probably a 12. Now, I would have never made that call, but because I was listening in between the gaps, 
I did something that I wouldn't normally do to give in a way that I didn't think I could give. You have gaps too. There's something more for you to give to the church, to your community, to your spouse. There's something more that you can give and it may look different than you think. We went deep. I'm doing a joke. <laughs> so, uh, Pastor Robert Morris is my pastor, right? And um, uh, I was at this restaurant. Just, they got this, it's called Babe's Chicken and Dallas got some delicious, it's like a mate. They got these little biscuits, right? They got these biscuits with the honey. It's amazing, like with the seven Z's, right? But it was out of honey, and I, and I was getting ready to leave, so the dude had to go to the back to get the honey, right? And then Pastor Robert walks in. I'm like, hey, what's up? He's like, Mike, hey, what you doing here? I wasn't thinking. I was like, oh, man, I'm just waiting on a couple of honeys, you know? <laughs> I'm going, yeah. I just wasn't paying attention for some reason, man. When my teachers in school, they used to try to tell me I had ADHD. I ain't paying no attention. So whatever. I know this stuff, right? You ever watch TV, you see the commercial? You ever see this commercial? It's the old lady, she's all wounded. I mean, she's not wounded, she just fell down. She might be wounded. We don't see the rest of the commercial. Anyway, let me stop. Anyway. All right, so it's the commercial, but the old lady, she fall down, right? She's like, help, I'm falling and I can't get up. First thing I'm thinking, why don't the cameraman help her? He right there. <laughs> he is right there. That's what's wrong with this world, man. I get random thoughts like, did God give chickens wings just for us? <laughs> they don't even use them. They're just working them out all day long. They're just working them out. They're just working them out. Oh, check it. So remember the Starbucks story, right? Starbucks, just drive off. It's really about obedience versus. So I'm going to ask, ask you a question. This is for everybody. I want you to answer this question in your head. Don't answer it out loud because this is about giving. So just answer this in your head. Um, let's say you're walking down the street and you have two bottles of water and you're not thirsty. And you see a homeless guy who's thirsty. What should you do? I would submit to you that you don't give him the water. But instead, you quickly ask God, hey, God, what do you want me to do? Because for all you know, behind you is a lady with one bottle of water and a stingy heart. And God's been working on her. And this is her opportunity to give the guy the water. In the first scenario, you play God. In the second scenario, you play for God. I'd rather play for God. Obedience is better than sacrifice. If you get a hold of that, when you read through the Bible, things like tithing and, and all of the times it says give it isn't an issue any longer. You just get it because you're just being obedient. And watch what happens on the other side of that. Whoa. Like even with comedy, I find funny everywhere. I'm at a, listen, I don't drink 2% milk because I don't know what the rest of it is made out of. <laughs> that just popped in my head one day. I was like, oh snap, that's awesome. Let me write that down. It's a math joke. There's like 97% unaccounted for. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Some people, don't, some people don't get that joke, and I explained to them. I explained to them. If I had a nickel for every time somebody tried to tell me my math was wrong, I'd have $2.83. If you didn't get that last joke, <laughs> yo, math is wrong too. I had a yo mama joke pop in my head, right? I don't even write your mama jokes, but your mama joke just showed up. And the reason I'm gonna do this your mama joke right now is because there's a learning opportunity on the back end of this your mama joke. If you don't know what a your mama joke is, you probably gonna take this personal. <laughs> All right, here it is, here it is, here it is. All right. Uh, your mom was so fat, they couldn't even lift her up in prayer. <laughs> okay, okay. That's the response I was expecting. All right, let me explain to you guys what just happened right now. Um, okay, if you notice, some of you guys laugh, which is the right response. But some of y'all went, whoa. <laughs> let me explain to you where you went wrong. When you hear your mama joke, you're under the impression that somebody's talking about your mama. 
It's not your mama. It's a random mama that nobody knows. <laughs> Nobody's ever met her before. It's a random mama. She probably don't even got kids. It's a random mama. <laughs> but instead of you join, enjoying a joke, you're sitting there going, no, stop it. She's trying to lose weight. Stop it. <laughs> It is not your mother. <laughs> this next joke is one of my favorites because it's a time release joke. Different people will get this joke at different times. <laughs> some of you immediately, some of you, it's gonna take like 16 seconds. Some of y'all, not today. <laughs> and that's okay, that's just where you are currently, that's okay. So I'm gonna do the joke, and once I do the joke, I want you to pay attention to the people around you and notice how they're getting jokes at different times in the pockets of laughter throughout the room, wherever you are. And if you're watching on your computer and you don't laugh, well, <laughs> just wait a little bit. <laughs> so here's the joke. So I was, uh, I'm thinking about opening up some restaurants in the North, um, um, probably gonna call it, call it um, African American Barrel. So I'm thinking about calling it. Uh, Oh, okay, just now, okay, okay. A <laughs> couple people faking it, a couple people faking it. <laughs> Ooh, that's funny right there, that's funny. Ooh, that's funny. I do public service announcements sometimes. I just heard somebody say, that's funny. Let me see if I got this right. Instead of actually laughing, you just gonna announce your reaction? That's how you wanna do it? <laughs> That's like driving down the street, you get cut off in traffic like, <gasps> the horn. <laughs> well, I got another one, I got another one. You get a speck of dust in your eye, you just stand there and say, blink, 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 blink. <laughs> blink, 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 blink. You gotta do something, you can't just. <laughs> that, is, that is very similar to somebody saying, ooh, I should give of myself and then never do anything. <laughs> that wasn't even supposed to tie together, it just happened right now. <laughs> I should do something, shoot, let me get this remote. Really, it's, it's, there's opportunities. So. I also want to do a public service announcement real quick. Uh, if you're a grown man and you have to point your toes to put your jeans on, uh, you're making bad choices. I just want to throw that out there. I just like to say that sometimes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're making bad choices. Just a little help for you guys. So I got this cool story I want to tell you guys. I got this cool story I want to tell you. So I'm the type of person who loves to give. Like I love, love giving. But again, I try to give when I should give, never out of compulsion. I ain't talking about the tie. Like that's not even my money. Like that's, that's literally, you're not even giving if you don't do the tie. If you don't tithe anything else, you're not even giving. You just spend it to somebody else's money. Hey Lord, thanks. I'm, I know this, I know, but I'm gonna get this. It's a good person though. What? Anyway, anyway, all right. So, but I love to give, but I try to give when I should give, never out of compulsion. So, uh, like you ever see them commercials of the wounded dogs? Please send this dog $20. I ain't giving that dog no money. He got a job, he's an actor, I see him on TV. <laughs> so I try to give one a shit. So this is what this looks like for me. We met this, uh, this family. I think we have a picture of the family. So we got, yes, beautiful family, right? Look at the little boy between his dad's legs. He is doing too much, right? <laughs> this is the Richardson family. So let me tell you about the Richardson family. So they have uh, five biological kids and then they adopted two teenagers. And at the same time, they were fostering uh, five siblings all under the age of seven. It's a lot of kids. Then someone came along and they wanted to adopt two of the five siblings, which means they would be split up and probably never see each other again. So the Richardsons, who don't make much money at all, they were fine with stepping up, getting additional jobs, and they adopted those kids which was really, really, really awesome. Then, through some circumstance, someone came along and they stole one of their vehicles. Now this really big family is down to one vehicle and they sometimes have to make two trips to go places. And this is where I found out about it and I felt like I was supposed to do something. But God didn't tell me to buy them a vehicle. 
He said, I got something I want you to do. Again, I want to be obedient. I don't just want to sacrifice. So me and my family got together and we prayed and we came up with this idea to do a comedy show fundraiser for the family. But here's the thing. If we just do a regular comedy show fundraiser, that is technically me buying them a vehicle. And I want to be obedient. I don't just want to sacrifice. So we decided to go to, we went to four of my events across the country, it took four events, and we told people about the Richardsons. And we asked them to buy tickets to a comedy show called the No Show Comedy Show. And people were like, well, when is it? I was like, I don't know. I'm not going to be there. And people bought tickets. I was blown away. They bought tickets to a show that would never happen. In fact, the back of the ticket said, you were buying tickets to a show that won't happen. And this is not a tax deduction. We didn't promise them anything. We wanted people to give because they felt like they should give. And we asked people not to give out of compulsion, not to feel anxious about giving, but do it because you know you're supposed to. So people are buying tickets, like I'm blown away. And the family now, they have no idea we're doing this because I didn't know if it was gonna work. I didn't want them to get their hopes up, but it's actually working. So I'm praying and I feel like the vehicle to get for this family is a Nissan NV. I don't know if you've ever seen it before, it's a nice vehicle, it could fit the whole family. So what we did, um, I go to the dealership and we have enough money for a Nissan NV and I'm excited. But then I happened to notice that they also had the Nissan NV. The one that's all plushed out. Well, I'm the type of person, I like to give the same way I want to receive. <laughs> so I want the Nissan MV. Well, the, deal, well, the dealership found out what we were doing and they bought 40 tickets for all the employees. So we got to get the Nissan MV. So, we, so we're working on a deal with this family and I didn't promise my ticket buyers anything. Only thing I said to them, I said, if the family gives us permission, we'll capture their story and we'll share it with you if they give us permission. So we go over to the family's house, they still have no idea what we're doing. And I'm, and I'm telling them, I tell them we're there to do a fundraiser video for them. Maybe they could raise a little money, pay off some bills, they have no idea. So we're there with the camera crew and they're telling me about their family and their kids that they adopted. And it's some really hard stories to hear. Like it's really hard. So I needed a break. I said, hey, let me take a break for a second. We'll finish rope taping in a minute. And then uh, I remember walking by the refrigerator or near the kitchen, and they had a picture hanging up. And the picture had been there for like two years. This is the picture. That is a Nissan NV. They wrote on top of it, God is awesome. This is our car. Reach for your goals. Obedience is better than sacrifice. So... So this is just one of the stories that we've shared right in the middle of my comedy special, More Than Funny. There's actually three stories. This is one of them. But I felt like I should share it with you in case you hadn't seen the, the film. So now we have this vehicle, and the family doesn't know it. Like, they have no idea we got it. Not only do we have a vehicle for them, we now know we have their dream vehicle. And now all I have to do is figure out a way to deliver it. Well, I do comedy. Delivery is what I do. <laughs> so we all go to their house. They're all piled in to watch the video. But what we really want to do is watch them watch the video. Because in the midst of this, I'm going to sneak out, go outside, interrupt the video, and it's going to be me in front of their house introducing them to their brand new Nissan MV. Check it. I know you're in there sitting on the couch wondering if this is actually a real live video. Well, it is. And the reason I'm in front of your house right now is because I would love it if you and your whole crew and everybody else would simply just come outside so you could see your brand new Nissan MV.
cool part is your payments are only four hundred dollars a month. So no, I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's completely paid for, one hundred percent. No, no, it's, it's completely paid for. This isn't a Michael Jr. thing. This is about a family. And people y'all never met before heard y'all story. We decided to do a comedy show fundraising. But there actually wasn't a show. So people all over the country, my fans, different places, got together and bought tickets to a show that don't even exist. See y'all can have this. I don't know how to repay anybody for doing something for me like that. Now you're in a position where you just need to receive. Oh, okay. I, I receive. I receive. So one of the things that I really, really appreciate about Life Church is the fact that you guys, like you get it, like you guys are fine with going out in the community and doing things, but there's, there's different levels of giving. But you also have to understand receiving. You have to understand, you have to have a balance. Giving is huge. Some people love to give, but then they have a hard time receiving. You have to have a balance. I was doing this event and, uh, Okay, I got two stories. I could do this Orlando story, or I could do this Nashville story. I'm gonna let you choose. I only got time for one. Orlando or Nashville. No, it's just, I'm pointing to one person. Calm down, people. <laughs> Orlando. So I'm in Orlando, and uh, I'm gonna do Nashville. Anyway, um, <laughs> I'm in Nashville, and, um, and remember, I'm listening in between the gaps, right? And I'm on stage, and please understand, you have gaps. There's some more that you can do. This is an awesome church, but you as an individual, there's more that you can do. Like you, like, so, but all you have to do is listen in between the gaps. That's what happened with the story you just saw. I'm just listening between the gaps. So we're in, uh, we're, we're not in Orlando. We're in Nashville, and I'm on stage, and I'm listening between the gaps. So we're like probably, I don't know, uh, 40 minutes into the show. 2,200 people sold out. And, and I feel like I'm supposed to talk to this lady in the front row. But the lady's death. Lord, what, really? What am I supposed to do? And there's a sign language lady on stage, right? So, so in the middle of this, so I stop, and I'm like, hey, can, can you ask that lady to come up on stage, please? So she comes up, it's a white lady, she's probably 52, 53 years old, she's really shy, she's scared, she don't know what's going on. The audience don't know what's going on, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> we all kind of tripping. <laughs> so she comes up on stage, and I said to the sign language lady, I said, can you ask her, what is her biggest need? And uh, she signs to the lady, the lady signs back, and she says, she doesn't have any needs. She's, she's good. I was like, ah. Can you ask her again, what is her biggest need? So she signs over, she comes back and she says, well, her and her husband haven't been able to go out on vacation uh, in over 13 years. And they really need some time away, at least a weekend or something. I was like, okay, now normally what you would do, you just collect a bunch of money, yay, this, this. nah, I just asked the next question. And giving money is awesome sometimes, especially if you already took care of what you're supposed to take care of. I just asked the next question. I said, why not? She signs back, she comes over, she says, well, they have a special needs child and um, they can't afford the nurse who can take care of the child in such a way that they would feel comfortable leaving like somebody who's certified. I was like, okay. So I turn to my audience. The audience is still frozen solid right now. I turn to the audience and I said, where is the special needs nurse who can deliver their punchline? who can do what they're supposed to do right now. And the whole room is, you don't hear nothing, it's still quiet. So I said it again, I said, where is the special needs nurse who can give the way they should give right now? And you hear a voice come from the top balcony and this lady says, here I am. And this lady comes walking down and we introduce them and they live 30 minutes from each other. And the whole room is done. <laughs> like we're all done. And we got to experience that together because people understood the importance of giving and receiving. It's amazingly important. You gotta fully grab a hold of this. You have to fully grab a hold of this. 
It's so important because there's people right next to you right now who need you to give and they also need you to receive. So get yourself out the way and just do what it is you're supposed to do. Listen to the Father's voice. Obedience is better than sacrifice. I love you. I'm Michael James. Thank you, guys. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Man, uh, did, did that speak to you the way it spoke to me, huh? Um, at all of our churches, there are some people it takes a little longer to get the jokes. You know who you are. <laughs> there are some people it takes a little longer to understand generosity. You may know who you are. We love to say it this way, that um, we will lead the way with irrational generosity because we truly believe it's more blessed to give than to receive. What I wanna say to most of you is thank you for being amazingly generous. Because of your generosity, we're able to give away the YouVersion Bible app to over a third of a billion people. Free gift from a local church. Because of your generosity, we're able to give free resources to literally hundreds of thousands of pastors all over the world. Because of your generosity, we're able to give millions of dollars to global mission partners, and we're able to give millions of dollars into our local community, not just money, but time of tens of thousands of people who are making a difference. And I wanna say thank you to most of you for your generosity. To the rest of you, what's God gonna say in the gaps? What's God gonna say in the gaps? We are blessed to be a blessing. That spoke to me, um, Amy and I try to lead the way with um, percentage giving. God just spoke to me to give more. There's some of you guys going to speak to you to give more. To the church, the tithe is not giving. We start with the tithe. The first 10% goes to God. We give offerings. We're going to see needs in the community and we're just going to be faithful because obedience is better than sacrifice. So Father, help us to be obedient. All of our churches, nobody looking around, those who say, yes, God, make me, help me be more generous. Help me be obedient. Would you lift your hands right now? I hope it's everybody. I hope it's everybody. Father, help us be more generous. God, we honor you with a tithe. 10% is yours. Blessed as we give to you. Help us see needs and meet needs as your church. Make us more generous. As your hands are down and eyes are closed, uh, we must give and we must receive. God gave Jesus. We must receive the free gift of eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, Jesus. And all of our churches, listen, sometimes it's awkward to receive, but guess what you need to do? You need to receive the gift of eternal life. You didn't earn it, you don't deserve it. I didn't earn it, I don't deserve it. We have sinned, we fall short of God's standard. But God in his grace sent his son Jesus. He gave his life so that we could live. There are those of you, it's time to receive it. All of our churches, those who say, I am broken, I am hurting. I've sinned against a holy God. I recognize what he's done today. I receive that gift. I turn from my sins. I give my life to Jesus. When you call on him, he'll hear your prayer. He'll forgive your sins. He'll make you brand new. Receive it. It's a gift. You can't earn it. You'll never deserve it. Receive it. All of our churches today say, yes, I receive the gift of eternal life. I give my life to Jesus. I receive his gift. Would you lift your hands high right now? Just lift them up. Lift them up. Hands going up at all of our different churches today. Church online, you just click right below me. And as we have people coming to Christ at all of our churches, would you pray with those around you? Just pray aloud. Pray, Heavenly Father, forgive my sins. Make me new. Save me. Fill me with your spirit so I could follow you. As you've given me life, help me give your love. Being a blessing, because I know it's more blessed to give than to receive. I receive your love, I'll give your grace. Thank you for new life, now you have mine. In Jesus' name I pray, 
Could you all celebrate big, worship God, all of our churches? Thanks again for tuning in this week. You gotta know it's our heart as a church to help you continue to grow in your relationship with Christ. And we have a great resource to help you do that. It's called life.church slash next. There you can find all kinds of resources to help you continue to grow in your relationship with Christ. Again, thanks for joining us here at Life Church. We'll see you next time.